Yo, what up? It's Brandon Shot Me. Welcome back to the Shooters Podcast, where we go over the business of photography and videography. All right, so let's jump right into it, man. Um, I know I'm supposed to have like a trash segment, but um, I ain't got a name for it yet. So we just gonna. I'm struggling, y'all. Somebody help me with a name. I think Ruby said trash talk. Something I don't know. Just if you think of a segment for, if you think of a trash segment, um, let me know. Okay. Uh, let's jump right into it man today we're going to be talking about well i got so here's the thing i got three different titles i don't know which title i want to use so one of them is going to be how to get started as an entrepreneur um and you'll see whichever title i use once i put it in here but these are the titles i'm thinking about so how to get started as an entrepreneur because somebody mentioned me this in the community uh text okay um one the text community okay how to get started as an entrepreneur uh or 10 steps to photography and videography freedom that one just sound a little spicier. Sounds spicy. Okay. So I don't know. But it's one of those two. Either way, I'm going to put them all in the same. It's not going to be the same stuff. Okay. So it's going to be 10 steps to photography and video freedom or how to get started as an entrepreneur. So I don't know. If you have one hits, whatever. I'll, I'll figure it out later. All right. So let's jump right into the 10 steps. Okay. So I wrote them all down just to make sure that I don't get lost. Because when it comes to podcasts, there is no... Uh, there's no cuts. There's no take backs. All right. Once you're rolling, you rolling. That's all good. All right. So if you are getting started as an amateur, okay, or not necessarily amateur, I'm going to just say if, if, if you're getting started, even if you're not getting started, let's say there is a, um, you still need to be able to listen to this particular episode because you know, you don't necessarily know which stage you're in. And let's say you are on step five or six, you can go back and fill in some of the gaps that you miss okay so the first thing you need to do i mean this is if you first pick up you first um you say you know what you make a decision and say i want to jump into photography and videography i want to go ahead and get a camera you purchase your camera you watch four million youtube videos don't lie i know you did you don't watch comparison videos you don't watch review videos just to get a camera you don't like anyway and you're probably spending your rent money and your child support money on the camera no not the camera on the goddamn lens Ask me how I know. Now, got that out the way. <laughs> no, nah, so listen, once you get your camera right, what you want to do, the first thing you need to do, you need to learn the three basic lighting elements, right? Um, which is aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Okay. All these three elements or components um in your camera, they control the amount of light, right? But they work in different um, they work different ways. Right. So ISO is um, like fake light, artificial light coming from the body of the camera. Um, your F stop or your aperture is um, natural light coming from the lens. Right. So if you take the lens off and you and you separate the camera, the I, aperture and F stop only comes from the lens. OK. And then the ISO only comes from the body of the camera. OK. So you have to separate those two to understand that. Right. And then um, lastly is your shutter speed. OK. So shutter speed also controls um lighting as well right so this helps you to be able to um capture things um the, of, of motion right and help and help um help with clarity of your uh, images right so you want to be able to not only learn those three but master it and here's how you know you mastered it or that you understand it one you're able to shoot manual but two you're able to teach it to others okay so some people will get into an area where they feel like they know it and they understand it only because sometimes you can feel yourself cheating because you understand like lighting outside or whatever, or you can understand studio lighting. You kind of use the same similar effect um, every single time. But if you're able to uh, master manual mode, right? When I mean master manual mode, I mean, um, which is of course the gear, the gear on top of on top of the camera, I meaning you're able to shoot in different lighting environments. Don't just shoot in the house or don't just shoot in the studio saying, oh, I'm fire. I'm killing it. What you want to do is shoot in different lighting environments. This will let you know whether you truly have it or not. Meaning shoot where it's dark, shoot where it's light, shoot where it's rainy, a tornado, monsoon, whatever you want to do. Okay. Shoot it in different elements every single day. Okay. Once you do this, you will understand that, okay, I know this. And then you also need to teach it to others. Okay. I don't, you need to teach it to somebody who knows nothing about a camera. Go to work and say, hey, 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 Tony, um, 
I don't like you, but guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know you don't be liking your work friend. Let's just keep it real. All right, so you gonna roll up on him and say, "Listen, man, I want I want to show you this. Show him, and then see if Tony can take a picture." And that's how you know you've truly mastered your camera. Now, next, I already know what next one is. Practice every day. Practice every day. I know you like, bro. Yeah, whatever. Every day, I'm gonna practice when I feel like it. No, practice every. I got close to the mic. You gotta practice every single day. I gotta get closer. It's on. It's on this time. It's on for real. When I do my lives up, the, the mic don't really be on, but now it's actually on. You want to practice every day. Every day. Why is that? Because I understand the amount of time that you put into something. Um, the knowledge of, of whatever that thing you're practicing on, it grows. Okay. So meaning if you, if somebody practices, um, I it was a documentary. It was, I think it was, um, it was Kobe Bryant. It might've been Michael Jordan. It was Kobe Bryant. I don't remember. I'm just going to say it's Kobe Bryant. If, if, if I find it was Michael Jordan, just tell me it was Michael Jordan in the comments. Okay. So basically Kobe Bryant was, um, he was practicing. No, it was Jordan. Regardless, I'm gonna just use, I'm gonna use Kobe. I think it was the last dance, Michelle. Was it the last dance when you did this? Whatever. Explain so it, I'm gonna explain them. Then you you let me know. So basically, he will go and um, he'll be practicing every day, right? In in the gym, like he's practicing jump shots and all this stuff. And then another basketball player would come in. I forgot who the other person was, but he would come in, and then he will see Kobe practicing, right? And then the 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 second basketball player, the one who came in. You know, I don't know. Let's just say it's um Reggie Miller, okay? Because I don't know who the, who the second person was. Let's just say for this scenario, let's say Reggie Miller came in, seen Kobe practicing, okay, and then he practiced about two hours, and Reggie left, and Kobe stayed for extra hour, two hours or, or so, right? Then what happened was when he asked him, "Hey, why are you practicing so long?" He said, "Because I seen you come in, right?" So basically, he wanted to show to show him up, basically, basically trying to let him know that you won't outwork me, okay? But basically, when you do things like that, it shows up on the court. It shows up in your in your field. Whoever practice the most, whoever has the most consistency, it shows up. Okay. So meaning, if I've been put put it like this, it's been people who I've I've talked to. If I want you to ask people, well, I want you to understand that when you ask two different types of people, say how long you've been shooting, and one person says five years, and the other person says five years. Why does their images look different? Why is one better than the others? Okay, because just because I've been practicing for five years, or no, just because I've had my, I've been, I said I've been shooting for five years, doesn't necessarily mean I've been shooting on a consistent basis for five years. Okay, so that means I could potentially have my camera for five years, but the amount of times I picked up my camera was not as often as the, as the other person. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's a trick. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. You realize like, yo, you've only been shooting for a year. Why are you killing it? Why are your images look so better? Why are you making so much money? And I've been shooting for five years. What's the difference? Because I maximized my year and you didn't. <laughs> this ain't funny. This ain't funny. I'm just saying somebody got to keep it real. Okay. So does that make sense? Yo, it's people but like y'all been doing it for five years. Right. But how many times you had your camera for five years? You ain't been pulling out the camera, but once a month. So you've only shot 12 times in a year. I got to let that breathe. <laughs> and you say you've been shooting for five years. Okay. So meaning if you practice every day, it'll show. And you'll see why people are showing up. People who's been shooting for six months or a year and why and why their why their business take off and while you've been shooting for five six seven years there's a reason why you have to be honest with yourself and say yeah i've been shooting for six um seven years that's why some people a lot of people give me um um they have two different options they'll say i've been shooting for five years and then they'll turn around to say but i've been taking it serious for the last two what do they mean by that why would they why would they tell me that because they because they're honest with themselves they know that Listen, I'm going to be real with you. I only had a camera for five years. 
but I've really been taking it serious, picking up my camera more than once for the past two years. <laughs> so they want to let me know that they're honest with themselves. And then also I need to know that you've really been shooting for the past two years. Okay. I say all that to say practicing every day gets you better at your craft, whether you like it or not. Okay. Practicing every single day. I don't know if people are like, oh, what? I'm going to shoot every day. I don't care what you shoot every day. Shoot, shoot, daggone. Shoot your living room. Shoot, shoot some books. Shoot your laundry. I don't care. Shoot something every single day. A lot of people say, well, I don't need to practice because I'm already been shooting. I, I, I don't need that. I'm good. I got a client. Whatever. If you look at athletes, before they go to the game, let's say the game's on Friday, right? Especially if you're in high school, you play football and all that other stuff. The games would usually be on Thursdays and Fridays. We practice all week before we got to the game. Why wouldn't we just wait to go to the game? Why we got to practice before? You know what I'm saying? If you look at the great, if you look at the athletes, you look at your LeBron James, your Kobe Bryant, your whatever, your favorite athletes, why do they have to practice before they play at the game? So to, to be great, you must practice on a consistent basis. And if they, if, if to be great, if they must practice, what makes you think you don't have to practice? But you say you want to be great. You want to be a great photographer and videographer. You want to be a great business owner. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's why I tell you. I keep you with the, uh, the, high, the high pitch. Okay. Whenever people say stuff that's weird. Yeah, man, I want to be a great business owner. Man, I want to be a great photographer and videographer. I just want to practice every day. I'm practicing you know, every now and then. I'm only going to practice when I go and get a client. Okay. The next thing, the next thing you want to do is you want to pick a niche. Okay. Niche is very, I guess I'm one of my three. So for those of you who are following along, you want to pick a niche because you're able to specialize in a particular area. Regardless of whether you want to, or you like to or not, it's all about getting paid. Once you have a niche and you specialize in something, it's easier for clients to trust you. Okay. It's easier for clients to pay you more money as opposed to less. Okay. So if if you have a um if you don't have have a niche right I had somebody uh, I saw somebody maybe yesterday they hit me in a DM I sent them some audio messages back and they were saying that yeah man I'm getting I'm getting um you know clients they're just coming you know here and there they're, they're, like the niche changes every time somebody hits you up the reason why they hit you up because they're not it's this is how you know you're doing something wrong when you got a um a music video when you got Let's say you claim music videos is your niche, right? Right? Or you got or, or um, I don't know, real estate photography is your niche, and then a and, and then a pet company hits you up like, yeah, I want you to do these pet photos. That's how you know your branding is off. That's how you know your marketing is off. That's how you know your 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 um the nick that you that, that that you chose is not it's not effective because you're not showing it as much. Okay, so basically the guy had like. A few different people hitting him up and he was confused like, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting paid, but it's just kind of coming out of everywhere. So what happens is you feel like it's working because you got three different types of um, like clients hitting you up. So you got portraits hitting you up. You got um, I forgot the other thing he said. Shit, what's the other niche? I'm going to just say real estate photography because I don't even remember what it was. But let's say you got portraits hitting you up, um, you know, fan, fan and portrait and all that. Then you got real estate photography and you also you shooting house and all that and then it was just like this but whatever it was called but door whatever whatever the shoot was a fashion shoot, whatever they hit him up too so i can i can bet okay that out of all those shoes out of the month he probably was maxing out a thousand two thousand you know three thousand dollars a month right or, or less highly less probably 500 because what what happens is when you have all these different niches, people don't trust you, so they're not willing to pay you top dollar. Okay? But once you pick a niche and say, listen, I'm only doing real estate photography, you're able to charge them premium prices because you specialize in this area. Okay? Right? It's the reason why the um, general doctors have to work more than the actual brain surgeons. The brain surgeons only show up when um, when needed, and then they drive off in a Ferrari. While the general doctors, they got to roll their slaving more than often. Okay. All right. What's what's next, him? Okay. After you picked your niche, guess what? We gotta practice again. <laughs> I know, like, dude, stop telling me to do all this practicing. 
when are we gonna freaking do what's up with the when when the bag coming? When the bag coming? We talk about practice. We talk about practice? Oh no, obviously. You talking about practice? Stop telling me to practice, dude. Chill out. Those young people do that, like you've seen them, um, them uh what's the move when you go up to like the famous monk or whoever it is and they be like, Hey, what I gotta do, Grandmaster? And they be like, You have to challenge your challenge your mind or saying all this weird stuff you'd be like dude right. what's the real st- karate kids say stuff like yo yeah wax on wax off i don't want to wash cars what's the real thing i don't want to wash cars tell me to wax on wax off how do i be a great karate fighter or whatever so i'm saying so like people look at me like yo man how do we get to, how do we get to 10k a month i'm like yeah man practice every day man that's not a stretch where the bag at <laughs> oh this is crazy okay if you follow the strategy, then you'll know when, 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 when the bad comes. Now, if you pick a niche, then you want to practice again. So that means practice on your niche. You want to practice on your niche. You want to offer free value. This is if you don't have a, if you don't have clientele in this area, you want to be able to get clients in this particular space. Meaning if I'm doing, um, pet photography. Okay. I'm going to practice on other, um, companies that have pets. Okay. Or if I'm a, you know, a chef, um, or, you know, a, um, um, the restaurant photographer or whatever, right? I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice different dishes. So now when you see, when you see on my Instagram, right, you see my portfolio, you get to see that, wow, this dude been doing a lot of dishes. Okay. So now what happens is after you, after you practice on these people, you only did three, four, five different, five different people. You're essentially done with doing free work because now you've built your portfolio. Okay. That's number four. Number five. Start giving discounts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That right. That right. That right. <laughs> Start giving discounts, right? People love discounts. Here's 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 what it is. Here's 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 what it's like. You know how um it's some people that don't even necessarily that don't even go to the store, grocery store, whatever, grocery store, clothing store, whatever, until they get the coupons in the mail or in the email. You won't think about Macy's all week. Right, they done sent you to friends and family. You like, oh my god, that's this week. You done blocked off your whole Friday. You took off work. <laughs> you took off work. You pulling up at Macy's. You done spent nine nine billion dollars. You spent nine billion on clothes that you ain't gonna wear. Okay, you went to the um the, the, the grocery store. They said they 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 said the pound the pound of hamburger went down from 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 five dollars to four ninety five. That pound of hamburger. You rolling up in there. You done bought all the cereal. You done bought all the hamburger. You done bought everything. Okay. So meaning giving discounts is a um, attraction, right? Now is a certain way to do discounts. What you don't want to do is be like, oh, throw the thing on your page and say, throw the little flyer to say, hey, you know, hundred dollar photo shoes, whatever, ten dollar photo. That stuff does not work. It does not work. You want to be able to um, have conversation with your ideal client. The people who are willing to pay you top dollar, which is in your niche. So meaning if I know I wanted, you know, $500 for a shoot anyway, why don't I just reach out to somebody who is my ideal client, right? And tell them, hey, you know what? I'm offering um, half off, right? So it's usually $1,000, but, um, you know, you're my ideal client. I'm running, I'm running this 50% off um, whatever situation and I can give it to you for half off. So now you'll still be able to get your $500 that you wanted. I hope y'all caught that. I don't think nobody caught it. You might want to rewind it if you missed it. And rewind it if you missed it. Okay. Now, <laughs> what number is that? Four, five. That was five. So we're on six. Number six is master your pricing. Master your pricing. You want to be able to understand if you don't know how to you if you don't know how to price, make sure you go back and watch the episode before this where I talk about pricing. Okay. Pricing is, is very important because what happens is you have to, um, your pricing is always changing. Uh, sometimes it's too less. Sometimes it's, you know, it's just not what, it's not what people like or want. Meaning I was just, um, what was I saying to 3D a while ago? What was I saying to him? Something about somebody was nickel and diamond, something. Regardless, people don't like. Um, you know, nickel and diamond, like people, people, I, I told them people don't understand the, uh, the power of inclusive, right? Of, of, of all inclusive. I'm sorry. People don't understand the power of 
all inclusive. And I was I was telling my wife, I was told in this scenario, I said, listen, what if you go to a mechanic shop or whatever, right? And they said, listen, yeah, you can go ahead and let's go and fix the uh those uh brakes for you. So the labor is um, you know, two hundred dollars. So I'm gonna swipe your car for that. And then I'm I'm gonna let you know how much the uh, the brakes cost. And you come back, now you're gonna pay for the, the brakes, the, the actual brakes itself. That's that's you know, that's whatever, hundred and twenty dollars. And then he said, Oh yeah, the materials we use, you know, we use we, we use a hammer, a wrench and all that. So yeah, that's gonna be seventy five dollars going to use that. And then we had to drive around and make sure the brakes were messed up. So that's gas. So going, you know, cash out me, you know, just cash out, zell me forty five dollars, right? That's not a good experience. As opposed to you saying, listen, for your brakes, for the everything, for the for the diagnostic, all this stuff, everything is going to cost seven hundred dollars. I would much rather pay the seven hundred as opposed to you nickel and dime me up to four hundred dollars. You know what I mean? It seems like you're trying to get over. Okay, nobody likes being nickel and dime. It's not a great experience. Okay, so master your pricing. Where am I at? We're number seven. Number seven, learn sales. Learn sales. You don't have to be a master salesman, but you just have to um, understand how to uh, talk to clients. You don't have to be like a door-to-door salesman, like, you know, like when them, you know, when them, um, janky promoters, the, the the guy that come door to door with the vacuum, you don't have to be that guy, right? But you have to understand sales. You have to understand the psychology of people, right? And the mindset of people. That's very, very important. So it'll keep you from getting upset. It'll keep you from not knowing what to say and how to say it and all this, this other stuff. You'll learn different, um, you know, terminology, you know, like value stacking and all these other different things, right? So a lot of times people will figure out like, oh, how can I really blow up in photography and videography? It's everything else outside of the creative space, right? I didn't mention anything about creative. Shoot, I, number one was the only thing creative that I mentioned. That was it. That lets you know, how do I blow up in the photography and videography business? Stop being so dang creative. Okay. I know I wrote some fe- feathers there. Let me go ahead and skip over that. Okay. <laughs> Master leadership and personality. Master leadership and personality. Now, why is this vital? Why is this vital? I didn't realize that you had to be a leader in business. Like, I didn't think, like, we always talked about, man, I want to be a CEO, right? And yeah, yes, essentially, you can be a CEO and have no employees, I guess. Or maybe. I don't know if you can or not. But we always talked about being the CEO, being the boss, being the owner. But what what does it take to be an actual leader? Okay. Most people follow the leader. Oh, that's the thing. Follow the leader. <laughs> most people follow the leader, right? But most people don't follow bosses. People don't like when you, man, you you trying to be the boss of me. People don't like that. But when you're a leader, it's easier for us to follow you. So meaning I had this job where I worked at where um, it was his team leader, and then I had a supervisor. Now I like my team leader. Anything my team leader asked me to do, I would do. I would stay over. I would do whatever he wanted me to do, um, for free, because he was just such a great leader. He would he would do things with us. He would talk to us when he come in. He just uh, he was a genuine person, and he seemed like he cared a lot of people. The supervisor didn't give a dang at all. Okay, he was just out there just um being extra. And just, you know, not not um, talking to people. It was just not a good experience with working with the supervisor. But the team leader, that showed me that he was a great leader. And I wanted to be just like that. Now, this was this was at a, what was at a job. Now, here's why I failed as a leader so many times. When I first got into the, um, the military, right, I was in, um, you know, I was in the Army basic training. So this was, uh, well, I was 20, 21, 21. And... First day, basic training, we had to, um, the drill sergeant came first day, cussed us all out. We, we got, off, got off the bus, cussed us out all the way up to the dang on barracks and all that. So we got there, we did like, you know, of course, we did a total line. We all stood there and we just, he was walking around, cussing everybody out and giving us a rundown while cussing us out at the same time. So then he said, all right, cool. Now we need a platoon guy. A platoon is um, the, um, the I guess, how do I say it? Uh, I guess people, all the people that is in my particular uh, section, that's a, a platoon. So it was like 30 of us, 
or 40 of us, whatever. So we had like four different sections. We, we broke it off into different companies, essentially. Okay. So we had one company um, and we had 30 some people in our platoon. There's another platoon. Okay. So it's just whatever, 30 or, or, or 40 people regardless. Okay. So we said, hey, we need a platoon guy, which is basically a team leader, right? That's going to be able to manage all of us. Okay. So he said, all right, I need to pick somebody, Dixon, which is me. You call everybody by their last name, right? So he said, all right, Dixon, you can be our platoon guy. I was like, holy crap. I usually never get like, I usually never get picked for stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's usually like, you ever, uh, I don't know. I just skate about so much stuff. You ever seen the thing where it's like, all right, everybody stand up in, the, everybody stand up in the class. One person going to have to stand in front of here and read a poem. I, I'm usually never get the person because I'm always in the back, kind of in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Trying not trying to be out the way, but for this one, I was like, "There's no way I'm going to get get, get um get picked for this." There's so many people in here. It's all right, Dix. I'm like, "Crap! How did he pick me out of all these people?" Right? And then he he picked me. Then he picked an assistant. So I'm a platoon guy, and then I got a platoon guy assistant, and we're the leader of whatever thirty or forty people that was in this in this particular barrack. Now, mind you, I'm 21. There's people all different ages. All, all over the country. I don't know none of these people. Where I'm talking about, there's people 19, there's people 40, there's people 30. And I'm like, I'm not used to telling people what to do. Now, at this stage of my life, I was very, very, um, you know, people uh, took advantage of me. You know, I wasn't the strong person that I am now. Okay. So I'm like, yo, I'm not going to be able to do this. Right. I didn't have the confidence. And literally, we started next day. I tune God, this is what you need to do. Boom, boom, boom. Next day. Woke up four in the morning. We got to make sure latrine, which is the bathroom, latrine clean, barracks clean, bed, bunk, whatever. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Um, Yeah, so I said, hey, hey, guys. Um, mm, <clears throat> I know y'all, I know y'all, I know y'all trying to get out the formation. Mm, I, okay, you can walk past me. Okay, great. Um, Oh, well, okay. It's nobody left here left. Okay. Well, so me and my platoon got assistant started cleaning the bathroom latrines by ourselves to make sure we don't get in trouble. Okay. By the time the second or third day, the platoon got assistant stopped coming. So then I had to do it by myself. I'm checking, checking the bed, bus, make sure everything I'm making up pe people's beds. I'm doing everything by myself because I couldn't get anyone else to do it. It's like, Hey man, let me get, yo, whatever Dixon, yo, I'm going to get back. Like, yo, whatever. I'm gone. I'm like, yo, so nobody's going to help. And then the drill sergeant, um, made everybody else do push ups while I stood there and watched. Like, yeah, cause cause Dixon here, right? Is being basically a trash <laughs> platoon guy. He sucks. So y'all gotta do push up until he gets his life together, right? And they did a whole bunch of those. And they were like, "Come on, Dixon, man, you get get right." And I'm like, "Man, it ain't my fault. It's y'all fault. Y'all need to come and clean. I'm the one cleaning. Make sure y'all good, right?" So then, drill sergeant he called me in there and he said, "Listen, um, you been you know cleaning the latrines and all that stuff, but um." Who else, who's supposed to help you clean the um the bathrooms or the latrines? And I was like, well, um, I know. I, I said, I know, I know my platoon got assistant. I watch I, at that time I said just you know my assistant. They was like, Great. And who else? And I was like, um, that's gonna be a trick question. Cause I'm like, I don't know who else. Um, and me? And like, right, okay, and who else? I was like, mm, I I don't know. Drill sergeant, I, I don't know. It was like everybody in that goddamn platoon. I was like, oh, oh god. I like, bro. How do I, how do I tell them to do it? And he was like, basically, I don't give a f. Just go tell them to do that ish. I was like, okay. So, I started doing it, and more and more people started to come. Like, nah, bro. I don't care. We just gotta come do this, bro. Come, I don't care what you're doing. Let, let's let's get it, right? And people started to come. Like, you had to almost be an asshole a little bit. Right. But it started to work. Now, I couldn't get everybody to come in there, but I started it started to be three, four or five people to come help me clean the bathrooms, clean the barracks, clean all the stuff before we walked the formation. Now, he still fired me in about two weeks. He fired me. Like, dude, you, you, you ain't you ain't you ain't got it. Hired this other guy. This other guy was a complete asshole, but he killed it. OK, he was uh, he was an asshole when he when he, he, he needed to be. But there was also, um, I guess, a leader. Whenever he also needed to be talking to people, make sure he was good. So he just had like, he was older, maybe been like 35, 30, 35, something like that. Had, had a couple of kids, married, whatever. So he used to, 
I guess telling his kids what to do or whatever. Right? He was just better, and he remained the platoon guy for the rest of the ten weeks. Okay, I I only I managed to make it the two weeks. Fired me and kept somebody else for the next um eight weeks. Okay, we were supposed to switch up people, but whatever. He did so well. Anyway, so I learned a, um just a lesson from that. Right, just like man, I got to be better at being um a leader. Okay, and then you know five years from now, six years from now, I didn't know those same those same. Um, um, attributes that I needed I needed them when I started hiring people So I started hiring people for my business Like I started hiring um, Like uh, videographers You know I wasn't great at that um, I didn't know that you needed systems in place Before I started telling people um, what to do I started hiring assistants for me So all the things that I tried to do And they didn't work out Because I didn't know how to be a leader Okay But once I started um, honing in on it Reading reading books like uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Okay. And just start understanding leadership and, and start understanding that leadership is not just about, uh, like to become a leader, you have to have influence. Okay. So that's one of the great, um, one of the, um, one of the things I learned from, um, from that book or learned from John Maxwell. So just honing in on that and focusing on leadership. Um, I know I took a long time in that, but I'm like, that joint was so like to get to where I am right now is that I have influence over, um, people, right? It talked about Harriet Tubman. It talked about Martin Luther King. It talked about the influence they had on people. Even when I started Shooters Camp, I had, you know, 2,000 followers, right, which is not a lot of following. Not even less than 2,000. It's not a lot of following, but I still had influence over people. You know what I mean? Not in, a like, a manipulating way, but it's like, yo, um, I like Brandon. He's inspired me from the things that he's doing. Okay? I said leadership and um, personality. I said leadership, but the personality piece is you need to be able to understand people. Okay, you need to, be able to understand yourself and understand people. You need to have, um, you need to have logic. You need to have a mindset to be able to understand, um, people in general, right? So, um, we do this thing, um, basically like a disc assessment, DISC. Um, I love the way Kendall, um, um, teaches it because he teaches it in like an animal, um, format. So Kendall Ficklin, so shouts out to him. So he actually showed me some ways of how to actually learn the disc assessment in a um, animal format, so I understand people. As is, um, I understand people in their animals, right? So meaning if you're a dominant uh, trait, you're a lion. If you are more um, adapting and things like that, you're, you're, you're a chameleon. If you are cautious and calculated, you don't necessarily take a lot of risk. You are a turtle. And if you're outgoing, outspoken, things like that, you're a flamingo. Okay. So, and as a, as it goes deeper than that, but they actually helped me. So now when I'm talking to people, I get to, I know exactly who they are and I know how to speak with them. And that also helps with leadership. So now when you're doing sales calls, when you got your mentees, when you got where they look like, you know how to talk to people and you don't get offended because you know what type of person they are. I know there was a lot. That was number eight. Number nine, get a mentee. Once you understand leadership, once you understand personality, you need to ever have a team member. Somebody who you can pass something off to, somebody you can always, you're always training somebody, right, that actually um, that helps you get better. And people don't know it a lot, but when you have a mentee, it actually helps you grow. It helps you with teaching. It helps you with always having somebody to always teach something to. Okay? So getting a mentee is very important. Then when it gets to the point where you need a better pass the system over or get people clients or create a team, it starts with your mentee. Okay? So have your mentee everywhere you go. Every, every Everywhere you go, you know, um, when you shoot, bring your mentee with you. And it could be your cousin. It could be a friend. It could be, uh, you can go to school and say, hey, you know, whatever who wants to jump to um to jump into this thing okay it could be somebody, somebody that you don't know you can make a post it could be somebody that you don't know um but get a mentee somebody who's driven somebody who has the same values and drive that you have and then number 10 last but not least get a mentor get a mentor here's what i didn't um Here's what, I didn't, who, here's what I'm realizing is that a lot of photographers and videographers don't understand that, um, don't understand mentorship and coaching, right? So other businesses, they understand that you need a coach, that you need a mentorship to be a growing business. But since photographers and videographers don't focus on business, they only focus on creativity, they don't think about mentorship. But if you think about anywhere in, um, in life, you always want to, anybody who wants to be better and want to grow, they always find ways and areas to grow. So meaning when you graduated high school, you want to go to college because you want to grow, right? Whenever you, um, 
whenever you got out of um you know whenever you're in, in um entrepreneurship and you want to like do better in entrepreneurship you got books you want it to, to grow whenever you're in photography video you want to get better at your skills you go to youtube and watch these virtual mentors show you how to use the camera and all that stuff because you want it to grow these are all different ways of virtual mentors or whatever you want to name it there's somebody else showing you education to keep you moving forward i'm done i'm done if you're a photographer and videographer and you're looking for a mentor you're looking for a coach you're looking for someone who can show you how to actually run a profitable business not just not just fluff not just youtube not just somebody who hasn't done it somebody who's still in the field um go to shooterscamp.com schedule a call and that's it okay <laughs> um if you don't know what shooters camp is shooters camp is a um it's a 90-day program where i show photography and video office exactly how i um how i built my business and then you get to use the exact same strategies that i use so i help you find your niche i can help you know exactly how to get clients i can help you how to get retainer clients clients that pay you on a monthly basis i can show you how to use your camera photo video editing so you'll basically understand photography video and create a piece and most of all business okay and after that if you uh, play all these cards right okay you learn you actually um apply everything that was taught you know you can make anywhere between two to 10k a month or more okay um that's it y'all it's your boy uh brandon shot me um we're done with this episode we killed it um if you're not subscribed already to the shooters podcast whichever platform you're listening to this on we listen to it on youtube spotify apple music whatever cool thing it's on i think it's on pandora too whatever you listen to it on make sure you subscribe okay i'm gonna keep this thing pumping keep it going um that's it man if y'all got some topics that you want me to cover uh, make sure you um you can either leave it in in the comments or actually text it and i'm in my te- in my text community let me go ahead and give you the number text podcast to 404-737-0891 okay with that being said it's your boy brandon shot me y'all respect the shot i respect the shooter we lit